Uh, Fat Akati says, hey, Nick, if you got Donald Trump to write a letter to YouTube about you and how he will break them up if they don't put you on trending would really help you out, King, LOL. Yeah, that would really help. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> hey, Nick, hey, Nick, <laughs> what if Donald Trump wrote a letter? <laughs> what if Donald Trump wrote a letter saying to keep your show on the internet? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> like, what's going on, man? What is going on? <clears throat> Some of these super chatters, it's like if you if you put the uh, proverbial doctor's tool, you look into their ear, you know, you go to a checkup, they're looking in your ear, you would see like a monkey toy. <laughs> you would see one of those wind up monkey toys doing the symbols, right? Doing flips. <laughs> well, like, what is the point of that super chat? <laughs> hey, Nick, if you got Donald Trump to write a letter to YouTube about you and how break them up if they don't, Put you on trending would really help you out, King. Like what? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? <laughs> Sheesh. Oh man. <laughs> Some of these people, I swear. I swear. And I'm sorry, you know, thank thank you for the super chat. I appreciate the support. I don't want you to think I don't appreciate your support. I do. But the I just have to ridicule the message. It's like what <laughs> I'm starting to feel a little bit bad, okay? I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be a mean, okay? I'm not trying to be a mean guy. I know you're just earnestly sending a message and you're trying to support the show and I appreciate that. You know, you're trying to support the show, you know, and all that and I and I appreciate the support, okay? Thank you, but <laughs> but I just read this message and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? What am I supposed to do with these things? Cover the epidemic two days ago, but we didn't really know anything about it. We didn't have great numbers. China's lying about them. We didn't know much about transmission, the origin, anything like that. But tonight we have more information. The disease has now spread to many different countries in Asia, uh, also including the United States. The United States isn't in Asia, but, you know, on top of the countries in Asia, it has spread to the United States. Uh, they're also reporting they may have found the origin of the virus, which could have been a market in Wuhan, where apparently they're serving all kinds of weird, exotic meats, bush meat, things like snakes, bats, uh, wolves, things of this nature. I am glad. It seems like this. Well, I'm not glad. I'm not glad. <laughs> I'm not glad that there's about to be a global pandemic that will invariably claim many lives. But we do have sort of like a new segment on the show. We're watching the pandemic. Uh, I'm very, I am excited. I ordered a costume yesterday. Not going to tell you what it is, but maybe I'll show you tomorrow. So that, that part does excite me a little bit. We have sort of a new, a new gimmick on the show. So what do we, uh, but of course, very tragic, very tragic. You know, we are, we are very terrified of, of what is possible if they've been just a reminder. We are using entropy now instead of super chats. I know if you've been watching the show all week, you're probably tired of hearing about it. You probably know about it already, but you know, remember we are split now between DLive and YouTube. I prefer at this point that you watch the show on DLive. And then if you're going to throw super chats or tips, you do it through DLive. You buy lemons and you donate a diamond or a ninjagini or an Injet. You know, that is an option on DLive. Uh, just because, you know, YouTube sucks. I don't really like it anymore. So I prefer that people watch and do the tips on DLive. But if you are on YouTube, you may notice the super chats are disabled I'm demonetized on YouTube, so that's not coming back. I, well, there's one more thing. You know, I did just tweet this out before the show started. It just dawned on me. Somebody DM'd me before the show, good friend, somebody who sends me a lot of good tips. This person sent me a DM and he said, uh, didn't Kathy Zhu promise to bring you soup when you were sick not too long ago? And sure enough, I went through my Telegram messages and I did find... A message from Kathy Zhu, she put it on her Telegram channel where she said something to the effect of, I was sick at the time, I was complaining about it on Telegram, and she said, if we were close, I would bring you soup, I would bring you soup and medicine. And I, the more I thought about it, the more I started to make the connection. Do you see it yet? Kathy Zhu of China. She's from China. She was born in China, okay, and she came to America. She was born over there when, and I think when she was like three years old, she came to America. 
She offered to bring me soup. The current global pandemic, the coronavirus, originated from soup from China. Just like Kathy Zhu being born in China and coming to the United States, so too did the coronavirus. It was born in China, it spread in China, and now it came to the United States through soup. Are you starting to see it yet? Are you starting to get the picture here? So I think we should consider ourselves lucky. I should consider myself lucky that I survived an assassination attempt. I was almost patient zero. Talk about coronavirus, global pandemic. Don't think I don't take it seriously. I was almost patient zero. Path, Kathy Zhu, she was going to ride over in my house in a rickshaw or something. She's going to ride over in a moped or a rickshaw. I don't know. Whatever they drive over there, hustling and bustling through the alleyways. You know, she, she passes some noodle vendor on the way over. Some guy carrying a lot of boxes and... There's all kinds of traffic going on through the alleyways. And she's on her, you know, rickshaw, some kind of modified bicycle situation with a little carryout container. She arrives at my door. I, I open up the container and it's the strangest soup I've ever seen. There's bats inside of it. Bats, snakes. She says, I thought, I thought this would help you feel a little bit better. Thank God we avoided that scenario. You could easily see how that could have happened. And where would I be? Where would any of us be? I'd be on, I'd be in the hospital on some kind of breathing apparatus. You know, I, I already suffer from severe allergies chronically, but I would be in the hospital somewhere on some kind of ventilator. I'd be out. I'd be out for the count. Groiper Wars canceled. 2010's Rewind Stream canceled. DLive Gaming Streams. It would all be over. It would be over then and there. America first uh, throttled in the crib. So thank God, hey, if you, if you needed any more evidence... No e-girls, right? If you needed any more proof of the tricks that they're up to, even the kindest advances. You know, you might think I'm talking about very obvious Fed, phishing, you know, DMs, whatever, catfishing. But even if they're offering you soup, even when you're at your weakest, immune system's down, you're sick, and they offer you warm bowl of soup. No e-girls, no e-girls. You see the possibilities here. So I really dodged a bullet there. I'm, I'm sort of breathing a sigh of relief. I have a new lease on life. I'm thanking God now more so every day, uh, you know, that I have on this earth that I'm not, that I'm not ailing from the pandemic. Yeah, Kathy Zhu, nice try. Regulation, and like I said, it's a big white pill. It's uh, part of a series of white pills that we've seen from this administration this week and really like for the past six months. We just actually covered this, what, on Tuesday, I think, going over this article from Axios uh, that showed all the different immigration wins that we've gotten just in the last so many months. If you look at border apprehensions, they're down like 80%. If you look at um, these deals that we're making with the Northern Triangle countries, which are El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, we're making all kinds of agreements where we can send asylum seekers and illegal immigrants back to Central America. We've got this new migrant protection protocols in place that allows us to keep asylum seekers and other border jumpers, people like that, on the Mexican side of the border. So all across, it seems like a lot of good things are happening with immigration, which I kind of had a feeling this would be the case. Uh, and today we got another new announcement, good news, that the Trump administration passed a regulation which will curb birth tourism. The new regulation says that it will deny visas to women that are pregnant. Now, I will say it doesn't apply to, I think it's 39 countries that do not require a visa to get to the United States. And this is like the United Kingdom, Canada, a lot of European countries. But it does affect the main offenders when it comes to birth tourism, which are, like I said earlier, China, Russia, Nigeria, countries like that. Um, and it also is not the same thing as birthright citizenship. But nevertheless... It's a big victory. This is a source of thousands of new, I mean, basically citizens every year, thousands of foreign born people every year, essentially, you know, thousands of people every year come to this country as visitors, travelers, whatever, to have their children. And then the children become citizens. I mean, this is just like an illicit way of immigrating. It's an immigration loophole. So it's pretty good news. And I'll read you. This is a news report about it. Uh, it says, quote, the State Department plans to deny tourist visas to pregnant women if officials believe they are traveling here to secure American citizenship for their child by giving birth on U.S. soil. 
The Trump administration says it is targeting the practice known as birth tourism. The State Department says that traveling to deliver a child in the U.S. is not a, quote, legitimate activity for pleasure or of a recreational nature. Uh, the State Department's rule, which was unveiled Thursday, states, quote, birth tourism poses risks to national security. The department contends that birth tourism has created an industry rife with criminal activity, including intentional, I'm sorry, international criminal schemes. Under, under the new rule, consular officials will have the authority to deny a visitor visa if they have reason to believe the applicant intends to travel to the U.S. for the primary purpose of giving birth. Moreover, if a consular officer has reason to believe a visa applicant will give birth during her stay in the U.S., the rule states that the officer should conclude that the main reason for the trip is to secure U.S. citizenship for the child. Uh, the change will take effect on Friday, January 24th, when it's scheduled to be published in the Federal Register. So that is tomorrow. Uh, the State Department did not specifically say how many babies are born in the U.S. Uh, due to birth tourism, saying it's a challenge to derive a precise number, but it estimates that thousands of children are born in the U.S. each year to people who are either visiting or conducting business on non-immigrant visas. The U.S. announced the first ever federal charges related to birth tourism last January based on cases rooted in the Obama administration. In early 2015, ICE raided groups in Southern California that charged Chinese women up to $60,000, promising to help with their visas, travel, and lodging at maternity hotels so their children could become U.S. citizens. So this is obviously something that should have been take care, taken care of a long time ago. You know, the more that the Trump administration buttons up immigration, I think the more you realize just how, like, just how bad, how broken the system is. So much of what has been cleaned up in the last three years, I think it are things that a lot of people are not even aware of, or things that if people find out about, they're like, really? That goes on? That was allowed to happen? You know, for example, with the asylum seekers. One of the biggest problems pertaining to illegal immigration during this administration is asylum seekers in particular. You know, not just people that are crossing at night without documentation or whatever. You know, not border jumpers, line cutters, visa overstays, but in particular, asylum seekers who will go to a port of entry, declare themselves, and because of all these loopholes in the law, they get brought into the country and then released just out into the open after so many days. It's like, are you crazy? How does that make any sense? Why would you bother even having immigration laws or a border or any kind of rules at all? If literally all you have to do is go to the port of entry, I mean, go to the door, surrender yourself to the agents, say the magic words, I'm claiming asylum, and you're, you're home free. It's the same thing as illegal immigration, except you don't have to sneak.